All right, we're going to solve some systems of linear, linear inequalities, and this usually is a section that comes at the end-ish of a chapter where you've been solving systems of equations, and so this combines what we did in those sections with what we did earlier on in the year where we talked about linear inequalities. Remember some things about linear inequalities. When we, la when we graph the linear inequalities with two variables, we put them in y equals mx plus b, we uh, drew the line, we had to remember to do a dashed line for not equal to and a solid line for equal to, and then we had to shade above or below the line based on whether it was green. So that was when we had one line. It's going to be really similar when we have two lines, except that now, because we shade both of the lines, our answer is actually where the shading of each line overlaps. So there are some steps here that you are welcome to copy down um, and refer back to as you do some problems on this. But our steps are to put the equations in the slope intercept form, which sometimes they already are, which is awesome. But sometimes we have to solve for y. Our second step is to graph each equation and to remember that equal to is a solid line, not equal to is a dotted or dashed line symbols. Remember that greater than is above, less than is below. And then finally, our solution is where our shading overlaps. You, can, This is, um, we'll talk about, like, there's actually like three different ways that we can do this. One of them is to erase extra shading, but um, there is another way as well. We're going to look at this graph that I have put on here and talk about um, the idea of if I have to shade with both of these lines, where is my solution? So I didn't give equation so that we know that we are going to have uh, greater than both lines. Let's say that is what our inequalities say, is that we are greater than both lines. Now what's important is, for one thing, for us to have a perspective here of when two lines intersect like this, it's creating like a top zone, a bottom zone, a left zone and a right zone. At least on this one, those names are pretty easy to tell which one is which. Sometimes they're not easy. If we want to shade greater than both of these lines, one way to do that is to go ahead and shade for each line. So this orange line I have, um, I'm going to shade greater than that line, which is above. So that is this direction on my line. And blue. On my blue line, greater than that line is this direction. So my answer to this is where my shading overlaps. If you're using two colors like I did, you're looking for where you shaded both colors, which is in this top section. If you're using a pencil, you'd have to be a little bit more attentive. If you're shading kind of lightly, that's helpful. And then that means that the darkest part should be your answer. And so uh, one way to make this obvious is to uh, more obviously, which is what I like to do either with my pencil or with a different color, is go back and shade so that it's really obvious which part is my answer. That's one way to do it. Another way would be to use your eraser and get rid of the extra shading that we don't need. And then there's also where you can just not shade until you figure it out where you should shade. Like it may be that you look at this and can tell if I shade above both of these lines, where does that mean I should shade? Um, but you do want to be careful there because sometimes it's not where we would expect it to be. So we're going to look at some examples of how to do this from start to finish. On example one, we need to start by solving for y. I want to mention to you, by the way, remember that if we have to divide by a negative, that we will, uh, wow. If we divide by a negative, that we have to flip the inequality symbol around. Or if we multiply by a negative, we have to flip the inequality. My first equation is just y is greater than negative 2x plus 1. And so I'm going to go ahead and graph that. This is a dashed line because there is not an equal to line as a part of our inequality. Now, as we're doing this, it does not really matter. Um, 
um, they probably will intersect. As long as they're not parallel, at least they will. And it does matter that if they're not parallel that we can see the point of intersection because otherwise we won't be able to shade correctly. But it doesn't actually matter where it's happening. Like I'm not going to write it as an answer. Greater than for this line, one way to tell is if you put your pen on the line and like this. Whichever side I drew that arrow on, that is the side I want. So for greater than, we draw our arrow up. For less than, we draw our arrow down. Whichever side is on, that is the side that we will um, shade. So this is my shading for my first line. It's on this it lightly or with a particular color um, that you'll change to a different one for the next line. Here we need to subtract x and so y is less than or equal to negative one half x minus two. So we start at negative two and go down one, right two. This one is a solid line. And we are shading less than. So which side to shade on, which is this one. And so the question is, where did I shade with both purple and red? Now I've actually done something here that is not super helpful, which because of my shading, I kind of covered up one of my lines to where it's hard to see. If that happens to you, it'd be a really good idea to go back and draw over that line so that it's easier for your teacher to see. But where they overlap is right here in this bottom right area. So that it's darker, or we could erase our shading that we don't need. And that would make it obvious. Uh, but you want to make sure it's obvious that this is this is the part that is our solution. By the way, whenever we think about solutions to this, technically our solution is all of the points in this shaded area, which means we have infinitely many solutions. And that's why we have to graph it. Otherwise, we have no way of necessarily explaining what our solution is, except for saying what the equations are which is not necessarily super helpful. So example two, we're going to solve for y. And we get 2y is greater than or equal to negative 3x minus 4. We're going to divide both sides by 2. And get y is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves x minus two, negative 2 and go down three, right two, because remember slope, rise over run, and negative makes one of the numbers negative, not both of them. This is a solid line, and we want to shade greater than, which is this way. So I am choosing to draw the line and shade as soon as I'm done with the equation so that I don't have to worry about switching uh, colors of pen a whole bunch of times, but you can solve them both for y and then graph them both or whatever you want to do is fine. So we subtract the 6x and divide everything by 4. y is less than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 1. So I'm going to start at 1, go down 3 and write 2. And it's less than or equal to this line, so it goes this way. Now, as soon as we had, like if I had waited to graph until I saw what the equations were, I would look at this and say, oh, these are parallel. Now, when they're equations, parallel means no solution. But since this is an inequality, we have to check our shading out. Because the parallel lines create these three different zones. A zone right here, a zone right here, and a zone right here. So we would look for, is there a zone where we have shading from both of them and there is in the middle on this so inside of both of these lines that's where we should shade now that doesn't always have to be the case that's kind of a nice way of having it happen 
but there's actually another thing that could happen to us. We could, uh, or actually a couple of draw our two lines. And what if it said that it was less than both lines? So less than this line is this way. And less than our other line is also this way. And so if we think about where that overlaps, that overlaps over here where it's less than both lines. So that's another situation we could have. If it was greater than both lines, that would shade this side. So let's look at the next example. We are going to subtract 4x from both sides. So 3y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 3. I'll say any other way because they're inequalities. We have to graph them. So if you're like, oh, I would love to use elimination on this. Well, that's not how this works. You cannot use elimination because we have to be able to graph it. You could use elimination to find out where the lines intersect. But that's not really that important information to us, at least not in these types of problems. This is a solid line. And it's greater than this line, which is this way. Then we're going to use subtract 12x. 9y is less than or equal to negative 12x minus 9. We're going to divide everything by 9 y is less than or equal to negative 4 thirds x minus 1. So this starts at negative 1 and also goes down 4 right 3. So these are parallel. But something different happens this time with our parallel lines. That's a really, really bad line. Pretend that line is straight, please. Uh, we are greater than, no, we are less than this line. That's this one. So that's this way. We want to say that our solution is where they overlap, but they don't now overlap at all. So this would be no solution. And you might check with your own teacher. They may want you to erase the shading you have because really there is no appropriate shading here. Um, we were shading to see where they overlap. They didn't overlap. So we can put no solution, but also our teacher might want us to erase the shading completely. Uh, so the only way that they really make this super difficult for us is, or the, the way that they might try to is by giving us more lines could make it more complicated and difficult because if it's hard to tell greater than this line and less than this other line, well, what if we add a couple more lines and have four lines? I'll remind you here on this example that x is vertical uh, for our lines, so x is greater than negative 1 is a dashed line vertically and it's going to the right of this line, the shading, greater than negative 3, that's a horizontal line and it would be above that line. Less than or equal to 4 for x is a vertical line. And it would be to the left of that line. And then we're less than or equal to 2 for y. So we draw a horizontal line at 2. And it is below. Now, it, I didn't actually shade. I just drew arrows because if I look at where all these are pointing towards, then it may be that I don't need to shade them all and look at the overlap. I may just be able to think about where they overlap. For some of us, that will be easier than others to just visualize where they're overlapping. I'm pretty good with like a couple lines at just being able to visualize it, but when we start adding a whole bunch of lines, it can get pretty difficult. So um, that's how we're going to do this, is we're going to solve the equations for y if necessary. We're going to um, graph the lines, shade them appropriately, and then remember that our solution is where our shading overlaps. So that is solving systems of linear inequalities.